Hello, this is new session in R. Uh, we are going to cover the materials that is covered in chapter 6 of your textbook. Um, to begin with, um, I have to say we the, the data set we are going to use comes from library ISLR. And we are going to use the very famous data set heaters. Uh, so heaters was was a very rich data set has salaries of different baseball uh, players and we knew many different things about them for example we knew how many hits they had how many runs they had and so on and so forth so the very first thing we want to do we just uh, we want to get rid of the variables that are not significant so let's get rid of uh, the values of the the variables that are not here so let's get rid of those as I said earlier um, in previous sections there are some variables that are missed in your tech uh, in your data set we should get rid of them so let's do that heaters is equal to an a omit heaters so let's get rid of those very values okay now we have a very nice heaters uh, data set now let's assume we want to uh, we would like to predict salary um, and let's say we want to use best subset selection let me zoom in one more maybe it's not that legible from outside so zoom in okay I think that should be better now okay good so let's use best subset selection so, so to remind you a best subset selection was it was an algorithm which would uh, use all combination of your linear models and would choose the best one. You could also use forward selection and backward selection. Um, so let's let's consider each one of them. In order to use a best subset sele selection uh, function, we have to install a new package, and this package is called Leaps. So please install this package. It may take a while to install it. Uh, yeah, it did. Um, so let's use that library. Leaps. Oh, library. Oh, my mistake. Library. Library. Okay, good. So we have that now. So let's use all subsets. So let's let's use our first algorithm to evaluate all best subset models we need to use reg subsets that's a, that's a new function if you want to know more about it put a question mark before it uh, it tells you everything about it so let's say we want to consider everything that salary is based upon and we want to use data heaters um, and let's record this uh, function inside a new one called regfitful regfitful um, if you're not if you just run this it will consider all possible subsets up to eight variables so that's that is the default here because usually when you have more than eight variables, it becomes very computationally extensive to consider all subsets. So let's let's run it and see what, what the outcomes are. Um, let's summarize our regfit full regfit full. Okay, um, so this is the summary outcome. For every subset, it says which one is the best. For example, for best subset selection, if you only have one variable, it shows the variable CRBI as the best subset for second for if we have two variables it considers heats and CR, CRBI as the best subset um, one thing I want to emphasize is that when when you go down um, the variables that are chosen before are not necessarily be here for example for eight subset selection when you have eight variables CRBI is not here why because your model is considering all possible combination so CRBI might not be in the best combination of eight variables. So default is only eight variables. So 
by default it goes up to best subset of size 8 but you may be interested to get the best subset of uh, size more than that let's see we have 19 variables here we might be uh, we might be interested to find uh, the best one the one that considers all 19 variables and goes up to there so let's let's repeat our our uh, model regs reg sub sets of salary versus everything we use data heaters so in order to set it to the um, to number you want you have to set nv max here nv max to number of variables you wanted to consider at most so let's look at this summary now so as you can see it consider all 19 combinations it went up to 19 variables so one thing i want to emphasize here is this algorithm was extremely powerful and fast for 19 variables because we only had limited amount of observation if our observation was millions then it would take it slightly more time to figure it out and these times increase substantially and exponentially if you add more and more variables so let's look at the names in our rec fit full to see what this model has to, has to offer it has a lot of interesting um, characteristics, characteristics attached to it. Um, oh, sorry, uh, let's look at reg summary. I'm sorry, that's my... Okay, so let's put that in reg summary. Okay, reg summary. Okay, so let's look at what, what is recorded in reg summary. In Rock's Rec Summary, we have very interesting stuff. Actually, we have three interesting values that we want to use. For example, we have adjusted dollar square for each of the models. We have CP, which was a measure that would take into account the additional variables we choose, and BIC measures. So let's use them to choose the best subset model. So let's first start with using CSP. Use CP. Okay, um, so we can have access to CP by just putting a dollar sign in front of this and recall it, call it CP. So let's let's call it, let's plot reg summary CP. So remember, uh, if you want to have an access to a variable like this, and you want to have an access to a variable inside this name, you just put a dollar sign. So since in the names of reg summary we had CP, we just put a dollar sign in front of reg summary and CP to capture what we want to capture. So let's define our X label as number of variables and Y label as CP statistic. All right, so let me zoom in. If you zoom in, this is the shape you get. So, I am sure you will agree with me that 10 variables have the lowest amount of CP, so that's perhaps what you use. But if you were to uh, draw the standard deviations around it, we would perhaps go slightly before that, we would choose five variables. Because as I said in the lectures, if, if you choose the minimum level and you find that within one standard deviation there is something smaller than that that you can use, use that one. So I would say you use five, uh, six um, observations or at most eight because it's very close to ten. You always want to use the smallest, smallest possible um, thing. So that is the plot. So let's 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 computerize anything that we want. If you want to know, for example, what is the mean in this one, use function which mean. So which mean rec summary CP 
gives you the value of that 10. You don't need to have a have a graph of it to decide it's 10. You can just ask it directly. Um, so let's let's do another thing that, that may help you as well. So let's plot reg fit full with the scale CP. Something wonderful will happen now. Uh, reg fit oh. Make fit full with the scale CP. Uh, you can also extract CP values with the scale CP of your full model, and that's these are the graphs you get. They may seem very weird at the beginning, but they're actually very nice. Uh, remember, we chose the minimum value of CP in our model, so it shows which variables are being chosen for different values of CP. For example. If CP is 5, which was the minimized version, it shows intercept, AT bat, heat, walks, cat bat, um, C runs, CRBI, and so on and so forth. Uh, the next best model is the one that has all the variables that is described, and this has this additional variable, which is um, league, league N perhaps number of times it's been played in the and as you can see the number of CPs are relatively the same for the same type of variables and later on when you when you use a lot of variables or so little variables here your CP increase substantially that's a very nice visualization of the data you're looking after so I highly suggest you watch these as well so whenever you want to see the, the how different CPs result in choosing different variables it might be nice to just use a scale and plot your regression line based on the scale CP. If you want to have access to the coefficients of that, since we chose the best CP as 10, sorry, our, our model showed that the best CP results in using 10 variables, you might be interested to get the um, coefficients of that you you can just use coef stands for coefficient reg fit full comma 10 because we, we said 10 was the max uh, was, was the optimal level of variables we wanted and these are the coefficients of related to that model that's the best subset selection of degree 10 which uses these variables with this associated coefficients. Okay, great. So now we can do the same thing with BIC statistic in a um, um, adjusted R square statistic. Nothing will be changed. So you just need to, let me do it in a lazy way. You just need to change this to say BIC. So let's look at that. You may get a slightly tighter answer. I think for CIC you should get a smaller number of variables because it has a, a tighter concept. Yeah, minimized happened at six. And then earlier in CPE I said it's better you stick to six as well. So you get almost same result. You can do that the same thing with adjusted R square. But remember for adjusted R square, you should choose the maximum amount. So BIC, instead of BIC, we have to refer to adjusted R square. Let's call it adjusted R square. So this is my plot. You get pretty much the same story. It increased up to 10 and then it was flattened out. But if you just look at one standard deviation, perhaps it will stick to 6 or 7. Let's say you want to have access to the information of coefficients that are related to seven uh, variables. We just change this to seven. So it's as easy as that. So that's, that's, that's the power of using all subset selection. But you might be interested to use forward selection or backward selection. Or backward selection. Instead of considering our potential combination of, um, of outcomes. Let's work on forward selection and backward selection itself. 
Um, actually, you're not going to change that much of a thing. So let me just cheat and copy paste our full model that we had earlier. That was our full model. So we want to use all 19 variables. The only thing that you need to change here is you define method as forward. So here it uses forward selection to choose the best model. So let's summarize that as well. Again, I do cheat. Um, oh, I should, let me, okay, so, so let me stick to full name full here. Let me change it to forward. Okay. Okay, so let's summarize that. Summary of rec fit forward. Again, it shows the different variables that, that are here. Um, you, you can ask for the names in your summary as we did be earlier, and you will see, uh, you, we can, for example, record it in reg forward summary. Okay, and let's look at the names inside it. You get the same, same thing. You get adjacent R square, CP and BIC, these are the, the things we want to use. So the idea is the same. If we want to use the variables here, that's that's the same thing. You can do the same um, same calculations with backward selection. The only thing that will be changed is let me first change the backward selection names. Backward selection things. And just change forward to backward. Okay, wonderful. Oh, why did I change the earlier one? Backward. So you can just run this and you get backward selection thing. So it's very easy to work with forward selection, backward selection, and whatever you want to do, that's fine. For example, if you want to have access to coefficient of um, break feet backward, you want to have the access to this best subset selection from backward uh, algorithm with six variables, you just, uh, okay, break feet. You just ask for this coefficients. Okay, there you go. So the best model that is chosen based on backward selection with six variables is 80 bad with this. Um, coefficient, hits, walks, run, division, and put outs. Good. So we are done with backward selection and forward selection. What is left is uh, just uh, validating our model. So we, we can use BIC, CP, and adjust, adjust, uh, adjust the dollar square. What do I say? Adjust, adjust the dollar square, or we can use validation techniques. So let me uh, explain what is validation technique. Um, in validation technique, we divide our data set into test and training set. So let's set a random seed to one. We can set it to any number, by the way. So number of observations would be dimension of heaters and the first element of that. So for example, number of observations in this case is 263. So let's define a training set. Training set would be a sample that has number of observations. Let's choose 180 of them, almost half of it as uh, training data, and choose it without replication. False. So our test data would be anything that is not in your training data. Cool. So, so let's have our reg fit best based on reg subset selection function. Subsets, um, break subsets of salary and of 
salary versus everything and let's consider data as heaters but this time we just want to find use the training portion of heaters data and um, we want to use nvmax 19 okay okay so recfeed best now is a model that is being trained based on our training set uh, if you want to just use the test data thing, it's just slightly harder to work on it here and uh, with reg subset. The reason behind it is because it doesn't have uh, validation techniques that we had earlier. So you cannot predict the same way we could. So we have to write some codes. Um, and it may become slightly technical, but don't worry about it. Uh, so let's build up test data set because we have to build up a matrix that is composed of our test data set let's call it test matrix um, in order to build up a test matrix which has salary as its first co column and then the rest of the variables and as, as its um, variable columns you have to use a, a function called model matrix Inside it, you define what what is your main variable and what are the other variables you choose. Then you, you, you introduce the part of the variables you want to put inside it. So here I want to use test data. So a test matrix now is a matrix that has salary as its first column and the rest of the variables as the rest of the columns and it used the subset of heaters data of test that is my test matrix so if you just look at test matrix it shows you some stupid things so let me do that oops um, yeah it shows me the, my new matrix okay it has salary as this um, y variable and the rest of the rest of the variables um, so we want to validate our errors for every single combination of best subsets. So let's call it validate. So let's build up a vector that is that has size 19 and has 19 zeros inside it. So valid validation matrix is val errors now. It's a it's a one by 19 vector that has all value zero. Then we have to write a for function. So for i in 1 to 19 because we want to check the validation set for all possible best subset selections from from the model that only has one variables up to the model that has 19 variables so we have to write a for okay so inside the for we just introduce the coefficients that comes from the best subset selection that is here so coefficient i is coefficient of recfit, the model we introduced earlier, recfit best. And it uses id equal to i. That means it uses that best subset selection. For example, it uses the best subset selection. The first time this 4 is run, the best subset selection is, is used has one variable the second one has two variables three variables and so on and so forth so that is our, my coefficients uh, later on we have to have prediction and and if our function had prediction on itself we didn't need to add these many lines of codes to get that but unfortunately best subset directory doesn't have this prediction function unfortunately uh, our prediction would be whatever value we have in our test data set based on the coefficients that we chose earlier times um, times that is the matrix multiplication times coefficient that we found here coefficient i um, I I know it sounds slightly strange to have this prediction, but um, 
what it does is that you have a matrix of your variables multiplied by coefficients so for for each observation you get the answer that is the prediction on your test set i know it sounds slightly strange but please bear with me so the validation error that we get for the ith model is the mean square of the differences of our predictions and reality so that would be the mean of heaters salary in my test set minus what we predict squared so we have our predictions here as i said since this model doesn't have prediction we had to write our own prediction um, function so we run it i think that was the only technical part in today's lecture um, and you don't need to worry about that. You just need to copy paste it for your own applications. Uh, uh, you just need to change the variables here, right? These things will be the same. These two parts will be the same, and these are the only parts that are uh, considered slightly more um, more challenging. So please, please don't worry about it too much. So we want to see what it was the mean in our validation errors. It was 5, it was minimized at 5, so let's get the coefficients of rec fit best based on these 5 values. It gives me. So based on validation, we get 5 values. So if you repeat this uh, example over and over again and change the, set, um, the starting seed here, we may get different answers for validation, minimized validation, um, but I'm sure it will always change from 5 to 8. So you might, we might have got a different number. Don't worry, but both of them are correct. The last topic I have to consider is ridge regression, lasso, and their cross-validation. Actually, it's easier to work with cross-validation in ridge and lasso cases. So we want to consider ridge and lasso. Before I start, I want you to always remember, if alpha is 0 in the models I'm going to introduce, we are using ridge regression. If alpha is 1, we are using lasso. So everything is perfectly easy in, to deal with in lasso and ridge regression techniques. So, in order to use, uh, in order to work with ridge and lasso regression, we have to install a new package. And the package is called glmnet. Package is called glmnet. So the library that I are going to use is glmnet. And glmnet itself requires another package is called matrix. So it does everything for us. So it is, it is apparent that it works with matrices. Um, Remember, for to use lasso and ridge regression, we had to define different values of lambda. Lambda could be changed from very small numbers to very large numbers. So let me introduce lambda in grids. So these are the values of lambda I want to get. It's 10 to the power of sequence of 10 that starts from negative 2 goes to length uh, 100. So let me show you what greed is. So we, 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 we considered 100 lambdas, which has values from 10 to the power of 10, up to 10 to the power of minus 2, and it has it, it divided into 100 pieces. So greed is these values that you can see. It's, it starts from a very large number, which is 10 to the power of 10, it's 10 billion goes down to 10 to the power of minus 2 which is 0 0.01 so we want to use these values of lambda to uh, to deal with our data um, so let's let's see what we need to do uh, here we have to use matrices and that's the problem 
So in order to use matrices, you should change everything to the matrix form from the data format we have. For example, we need to have our Y variables. We have to be very clear what va Y variables are. Y variable was our salary data. So it's just heaters, salary, okay? So Y is easy to put inside, but our X variables are everything but um, this salary data. So it's again, we use model matrix. Model matrix uses salary, uses data heaters, but ex it excludes the very first observation, which was my, um, my intercept coefficients. So we have a, now we have two va variables. One is y, which is our output, x are our, um, our inputs. X doesn't have salary inside it, y does. So now we can, we can easily work with anything else. So, so, so the first thing you need to do in GLMnet is to put your um, y variables into y matrix and x variables into x matrix. Since output is a vector, it's easy to do that. Since x is a combination of vectors, which is called a matrix, we have to use matrix model to deal with it. Okay, so now let's continue and, and see how we use ridge regression. It's completely easy to deal with ridge regressions. As I said, um, it has the parameter called alpha. If you set alpha to zero, you work with ridge regression. If you set it to one, you use lasso. So let's call the model we want to use ridge model. Ridge model is glmnet. This, this was a function from glmnet library. You, you first need to introduce your x variable, then y variable, and then you have to define whether you're working with ridge regression or lasso. Since we're now focusing on ridge regression, we set that to zero. Let's run it. So our ridge regression model now has, has the outcomes we're interested in, and we can easily ask it to uh, give us the dimension of the coefficients we have. It um, it has uh, any dimension you want, but but remember, I I okay, I, I made a mistake here. So in ridge regression, we need x's, y's, and we have to tell it whether we use alpha. But also, we need to tell it in for what values of lambda it works on. Here we introduce greed as different values of lambda we get. So let's set it to lambda equal to read. Okay, perfect. So now we have read regression model for every single value of lambda that is defined here. For, for x's and y's, x was all other variables besides salary, y is salary itself. So um, let's see what these coefficients are, the dimension of coefficients of ridge model let me call it model it might make my life easier okay two to hundred that means for every single lambda it estimated 20 coefficients okay so that that's why my dimension of my coefficient is 20 to 100 so for every single value of lambda which were 100 of them you get 20 coefficients one for intercept 19 for your variables Um, so, so let's see, um, so these are the, the values we get for different values of lambda, but we have to be able to um, cross-validate our model and choose the best one. Actually, it's very easy to work with cross-validation in ridge regressions. So let's set my seed number to a random number. You can set it to anything you want. Let's call the outcome CV out. It's very easy to deal with it because there is a pre-written function for that. So cvglmnet works with cross-validation and default is 10-fold cross-validation. You have to introduce x's and y's and tell it what alpha you should use. Since we were dealing with alpha equal to zero, uh, it works with, we have to stick to that. So cv out now is cross-validation of uh, CLMnet 
with alpha equal to zero for different value of lambda we defined earlier. So let's plot this. So plot CV out. Let me zoom in. So as you can see here, uh, for different values of lambda, and by the way, that is log lambda. That means this is this is 10 to the power of 8, this is 10 to the power of 10, this is 10 to the power of 12, this is 10 to the power of 6, this is 10 to the power of 4, this is 0. Um, it shows how my cross-validation error changed. So uh, it was... Um, it was smaller at the beginning, then it became so large. See, for, for very large values of lambda, where all your values converge to zero, it's very large. At the beginning, it's smaller. Um, so, so that is how you can get the cost validation you have. You are interested to find a minimum of that and use the best lambda that is there. Again, we use. Uh, let, let, let's first see what is in CV out. So one of the great things that is in CV out is lambda mean. So if you want to access to that, you just put CV out dollar sign lambda in. So, so let's use best lambda. Best lambda would be equal to CV out lambda mean. So let's see what is best lambda in this case. Best lambda is 25.52. That give my give me the best possible outcome. That's where my errors were minimized. So now we have to use this lambda to have our predictions. Um, so we can we can do it very easily, and that is by uh, by just say okay ridge model so let's let, let's let's do it again so so we we have we found best lambda now we want to find the coefficients based on this this best lambda so now so this is best lambda so let me uh just introduce another let, let me call our model ridge again so model ridge was GLM net of x, y, and alpha equal to zero. So let's now make the predictions on my coefficients. We use model reach. We use coefficients because we want to use the best lambda we found based on our coefficients. So our type is coefficients. S is um, uh, for, for this model in prediction, S takes the value of lambda, so we want to use the best lambda we find. And we want to apply it to the, the first to 20, all, all variables that are estimated. So, uh, okay. Let me see what's going on. Maybe I didn't run it earlier. Link best and uh, let me see. Maybe one and one to twenty should be. Okay, there is a technical one to twenty. Hmm. It's strange. Predict model ridge type coefficient. Oh, that is coefficients. Okay, maybe. Oh, okay, wonderful. So we want to predict model ridge, which was ridge model on top, four coefficients, and using best lambda on all the coefficients possible. So these are the coefficients we get. So these are the values of the coefficients based on the best lambda we found. For example, 80 bat has coefficient of minus 0.68 because it's 
minus negative 6.8 times 10 to the power of minus 1 and so on and so forth. So this is this is the model comes from the best lambda that you have in, re, uh, in ridge regressions. One of the problems that you may see here is that all of these variables are positive. So we couldn't shrink our model in any sense. They are very small, so that means they are all shrunk. But unfortunately, we have a lot of non-zero variables here. Actually, all of them are non-zero. So we couldn't choose the best subset model. And that was the problem we always had with ridge regressions. And that's, that's why I said whenever truth is um, limited amount of variables, we have to use lasso. Everything is lasso is the same. So let me do it in a very um, lazy way. I just copy paste whatever we have here and change everything to lasso. So the only thing that needs to be changed is setting alpha to 1. Let, let me change the name of the values lasso. So we want to look at lasso model set and see an alpha one cbl name cbl under mean okay that is fine uh, model lasso this is lasso and I have to change alpha to one so basically I just changed alpha to ones to make it with lasso so let me run it one by one cross validation let's plot it if you plot the cross validation again you see some jump and some some going down and jump here so it chooses the minimum lambda that is here so let's let's look at the log of lambda here it starts from negative 2 went up to 5 so negative 2 means log negative 2 is 10 to the power of minus 2 uh, and look at these values. Uh, the values you see on top shows how many non-zero variables you have. So for this value of lambda, which is a very small lambda, all 19 variables are chosen. But when you increase lambda to large numbers, lower and lower amount of variables will be chosen. For example, when lambda is 10,000, no, it's 100,000, I think. Something between 10,000 and 100,000 because we haven't reached, reached 5 yet. Um, we only chose two variables. More than that, we only use intercept. So, so here you can see the number of variables that are being chosen. In previous case, in the lasso case, sorry, in ridge regression case, we saw all 19s here because it always used all the variables existed. Okay, so, so again, we can find the best uh, lambda. Best lambda is 2.93 in this case. So let's have our predictions based on that best lambda. So that, that is our new models. What is extremely good about this new model is that it has a lot of zeros inside it. That means it fixed some of the nonsense variables to zero. So it shrunk the values up to there. Instead of shrinking all the variables simultaneously, it shrunk the nonsense ones. So now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve uh, variables, thirteen variables out of the nineteen. That is the best model you could get. So to wrap up, today we covered many different things, starting from best subset selection. We showed how to use CP and BIC, and then we showed how we can use validation techniques on it. And I, I, as I mentioned earlier, to, for the validation case, um, things are becoming slightly technical. Later on, I continued on lasso and ridge regression. Everything in ridge regression was easy, except one thing. The only thing that wasn't too easy in it was um, setting, uh, dividing your data set into variables and outputs, or inputs and outputs. So in order to do that, you should first introduce what is your model? What, what, what are the variables of your model? So let me explain what this function does again. So you are 
you're using model matrix on data headers and you're sorting it from salary on so that's what it does so it, it's model matrix it has all the values of headers but it put salary first so it's salary then all other variables then it drops the first column because salary was not in our first column to begin with in our data set but we force it to be in our first column now we drop it so whatever is left in x are our variables for y is easy because y is just a vector so we we, we we say okay heaters and salary part of heaters should be put in y so that that was the only hard part about um, the last one read regression everything is else was pretty straightforward. Whenever you wanted to use read regression, you would use alpha equal to zero. Otherwise, you would choose alpha equal to one. For model read regression, we found that we always get non-zero values. For, reg for lasso regression, we found that we can get uh, zero values for some of the nonsense variables. That concludes our course today. Hope you enjoyed it.